Thanks for watching this video. Today I'm going to talk about our work, a mean field analysis of deep res net and beyond, towards provable optimization via overparameterization from depth, published at ICML 2020. This work aims to build a theoretical guarantee for optimizing deep overparametrized res net. There are two regimes to develop global convergence proof for optimizing overparametrized neural networks. The first one is called neural tangent kernel. In this regime we linearized the nonlinear model and training the network is equivalent to optimizing a kernel model. The advantage of this regime is that it can provide proof of convergence for any structure of NN. However, the feature is lazy learned, it's not data dependent. Thus we can't achieve the generalization property as we want. The other regime is called mean field regime. In this regime, we consider properties of the loss landscape with respect to the distribution of weights. With the observation that although the objective function is not convex respect to each parameter, it's convex respect to the distribution of weight. Previous works links stochastic gradient descent with Wasserstein gradient flow and provides a global convergence proof. However it's hard to generalize this approach beyond two-layer neural networks. To generalize mean field training beyond two layers, we also brought the idea from recent line of research known as neural ODE with the observation that ResNet can be seen as the Euler discretization of a time-evolving ODE, ODE can be taken as an infinite depth limit of ResNet. However this analogy still does not directly provide guarantees of global convergence even in the continuum limit. In this work, we propose a new continuum limit of deep residual networks, which enjoys a good landscape in the sense that every local minimizer is global. Following the mean field training, we consider the ODE model respect to the distribution of weights. Here X is the feature, T represents the depth. Input data is the initial condition and we plug in L2 loss to the terminal output. To access the gradient of this model, we use the adjoint sensitivity method. The gradient of the feature map can be represented as a second backwards in time augmented ODE which is known as the adjoint equation. Once you have the gradient respect to the feature map, it's trivial to move it to the gradient respect to the parameter. We also want to remark that the adjoint sensitivity method can provide the same gradient as backpropagation gives you. Our another observation is that a deep residual network behaves like a shallow network ensemble. First, we offer an informal derivation to reveal how to make connection between a deep res net and a two-layer neural network. The first residual block is formulated as this. By Taylor expansion, the second layer output is given by this one. Iterating this expansion gives rise to the following formula. We can see that the leading term here is the ensemble of the shallow models. The higher order terms decays as the magnitude of inverse of the factorial. Next, we'll show how this observation can help us build the global convergence results. With the observation that the gradient calculated here is similar to the gradient of a two-layer neural network where just have a further adjoint equation. If we can bound the difference brought by the adjoint equation, we can say that the two gradient are similar. Thus we can have a every local minimizer as global in L2 space. We can also generate it to the Wasserstein space with a full support assumption. We also have a numerical scheme for the mean field model. We consider the res net as an alternative way to approximate the mean field model we proposed. The only difference in our algorithm is that we need to have a sorting in every forward propagation in order to let every layer to be symmetric. This single line of code helps us achieve better result on benchmark datasets. To summarize, we propose a new continuous limit for deep res net where the local minima are all global one. We also proposed a potential scheme to approximate. We leave analysis of Wasserstein gradient flow and the numerical scheme to be future work and how can the higher order terms in the expansion of ResNet can also be an interesting problem to think about. Thanks for the attention and more information about our work about neural ODE can be found at my homepage.